One of the things that I love about tiny homes is that they're always as unique and individual as the people who build them. And today here in Auckland, we're about to visit a house that is absolutely packed full of super clever design ideas. Hey Kyron, great to see you. Hey Bryce, good to see you too. And I am really excited to check out the tiny house. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely love it here. First of all, tell me why was it that you decided to build a tiny house? Well, I've been following a lot of different aspects of what's going to be happening in the future of real estate. My background is property investing. And as I was following it, obviously the tiny house movement is something that couldn't be ignored. And as I followed it more and more, I was like, this just makes sense. I was living in Bali at the time, moving back to New Zealand. I wanted a base, I travel a lot, and this just made a lot of sense to have something affordable, nice when I am home, but also I can just lock up and leave if I ever go traveling again. And tell me about the design of your home. Yeah, I wanted something urban industrial styled. And so I really spent a lot of time on what the color schemes were going to be, this nice sort of, this stain here with the black just pop. And I actually built it knowing I was going to be parked in this spot. So being able to tie it in with a lot of the nature, we've got a lot of native trees around us and just, it's hidden, but it still stands out. Yeah, the parking spot that you've got here really is something quite special because you're so close to the beach and then you're in a suburban area, but it's like you're in this little woodland paradise back here. It's seriously amazing. So I'm actually at the bottom of a friend's property and they were just parking their cars here. And, Crazy. And exactly right. And I looked at it, I was like, this would be amazing for a tiny house. And she was like, you wouldn't want to live there, there are mosquitoes. And so what I actually did is, is I drew up this ad, right? And I said to her, I was like, oh, I just found this on the internet, you know, close to the beach, surrounded by nature, perfect for a tiny house. And I showed her and she was like, that sounds amazing. You should go for it. I was like, this is your place. <laughs> and she was like, okay, you can do it. But yeah, I mean, the brilliant thing about this place, I think, is because her land here is actually zoned to be able to put three houses. But if you were to do that, you'd have to chop down all these beautiful trees. Whereas we were able to just slide in with the tiny house and we only cut down one. That is just such a cool idea doing that with the ad and everything. And this place is super idyllic. You've even got the stream here and everything. Exactly. It's constantly trickling water and then we get the birds. These are all pretty much native trees around us. We get tuis, we get kiriru, and it feels like you're so far from everything, yet we're only 12 minutes to the CBD. And so you originally built this tiny house yourself, expecting to live in it by yourself, but you've recently been joined by your partner, haven't you? Exactly, and I absolutely love it. It's so cozy having her in here, and it's what makes it home. And of course, to capitalize on the location, you've built this really good deck onto the tiny house. Definitely. This is probably one of my favorite parts. You know, the indoor-outdoor flow, this almost doubles the amount of livable space. And then, of course, being in this environment, we're amongst all this nature. I love to be able to spend time outdoors. It makes it magic. And so what size is the tiny house? It's 10 meters by 3 meters by 4.3 high. So took it to most of the extremes as I can. Um, and it is a little bit bigger than the more traditional tiny house. I actually call it a tiny mansion. But, you know, I could have gone actually bigger. I do think just having those extra couple of meters has allowed me to be able to design it in a way that it's a little bit more livable. I've got just that little bit more space and I think that really shows. The house looks great from the outside. I am super envious of this wonderful parking spot that you've found and I am very excited to check out the inside. Should we take a look? Definitely, come on in. All right. Oh, this is brilliant. Walking in, it really does feel incredibly spacious in here. It does, it really does feel just like a normal house and sometimes I even like trick myself, right? Because inside it, it feels huge and then you're outside and you're like, well that fits into something so compact. Totally. And so immediately upon entering, we are now in your lounge. This is where I'd spend a good amount of the day, either on the couch working uh, or at the breakfast bar working and even just you know eating here, snuggling up here. And so this folds out into a bed as well? 
Yeah, it does. It folds out into a double bed, which is great for when friends stay over. Really good open space so that it would be super versatile for entertaining and everything as well. I actually built this with entertaining in mind, as you probably could tell from the outside of the deck. And just because I live in a tiny house doesn't mean I shouldn't be able to have friends come over and you shouldn't be able to... to you should still play. be allowed some friends. I exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and of course, one of the things that I really like about this lounge space is that it's all been designed to just completely open out big double doors onto that deck and just really capitalize on the indoor outdoor living. Definitely, again, I knew I was going to be living here when I built it and I knew I'd want to be looking at it. In fact, every window in here looks out onto green space. And I really like what you've done up here on the wall with all of these plants. Yeah, the first goal was to have Japanese shoji panels, but they were going to be extremely expensive. And so I created this instead, which I think looks cool, but then when Natalia moved in, she was like, we need to put a bit of something here, which is how the plants came to be there. And then you've got the dual stairs here, both going up into loft spaces. Can you talk to me a little bit about the layout in here? Yeah, originally we are going to have two bedrooms, so because of that, uh, the kitchen and the bathroom needed to be the same size. So I've got the kitchen with my bedroom up here, and then I've got the bathroom with the spare bedroom up here. Because I didn't end up needing the spare bedroom. I actually turned it into a bit of a TV den. Fantastic, what a great idea. And of course, you used to be a chef in a past life, and so this incredible kitchen has really been designed for cooking. Definitely, this is my pride and joy. I, I still make the joke that I designed a kitchen and built a tiny house around it. This is where Natalia and I love to spend a lot of time, a lot of eating, a lot of cooking, a lot of tasting, playing, and this is, Definitely what I do for fun. Fantastic. So talk to me about the design of the kitchen here. The kitchen is probably bigger than that what you'd find in most standard apartments. I deliberately designed it in a way so all the food is just stored in one area. All the prep stuff is stored in another area. All the cooking stuff in one area, cleaning in one area, and all the plates and crockery. So we've had three people in here cooking, not an issue. So obviously in a functional kitchen, storage becomes really important. Can you talk to me a little bit about what you've built into the cabinetry here? Yeah, I think one of the key things is first off the pantry with this sliding out drawers, absolutely key. Great. Uh, another side is if you love cooking, you're going to hate dishes. So dishwasher is one of the most important things. And then of course, further to that idea of designing the house around entertaining, you've built this really nice breakfast bar in here as well. Definitely, this allows us to be able to serve food straight over, have breakfast, have dinner. We do most of our eating here when we can't eat outside, obviously. And also this gives us somewhere to work from when we are working from home. And then over the other side under this loft, we've got your bathroom. Yeah, definitely. Got a nice pocket door, keeps things nice and easy. And here we have the bathroom. And this is a really great sized bathroom, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Again, because I wanted the same size bedroom above it, it's resulted in quite a big bathroom, but I actually do enjoy having so much space in here. Yeah, definitely having that bigger bathroom just gives you so many more options, including in this case, being able to put in a whole washing machine. Exactly, this is actually a washer dryer combo. And one of my favorite parts about all of this is I've got this tiny little washing line here too. Very cool. And then you've got the composting toilet here as well? Yeah, so this is a actually dehydrating one. So it's got a little fan which sucks all the air and all the moisture out. And this will last me about two weeks until I need to change it. Nice and easy. Really nice size shower in here as well. This is standard house size, so this is 900 times 900. And so especially being here in quite a suburban area, can you talk to me about what you're doing with the grey water here? The grey water actually goes out into a tank where I've got a pump on it which then pumps it up to the main house and just taps into this over there. That's the way to do it. Well, should we check out the TV den upstairs then? Yeah, come with me. Let's take a look. And then it's good to see you have as well built in some storage into the stairs here, of course. Of course, every tiny house must have it. And because it's hidden by the couch, this is where I keep all my camping stuff and you know things you don't use too often. Fair enough too. This is super cool. Definitely. We're here nearly every day. I bet. Really neat couch that you found to fit the space as well. As soon as I saw it, I knew it. And actually, to be honest, this is one of the things which I think has worked out so well in my tiny house. Just buying normal furniture and not putting the feet on. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. When you're looking for a lounge space, you want a place where you can come, relax, and this feels completely separate from the rest of the house 
and just so cozy in here, doesn't it? Coupled with the trickle from the stream outside, it is, it's just magical here. Yeah. And then a good size TV you've got up here as well? Yep, a must, right? Probably could have gone bigger looking at it now, but I think it does fill the space quite well. And then what on earth are those? These are our onesies. You've got to have a onesie. I mean, in a den, you've got to have a onesie, right? Chilling out in the den in a onesie. Super cool. <laughs> what I like about this house as well is that you've created really good private spaces that are separate from the rest of the house. And creating zones like that goes a long way to making the space a lot more livable and a lot easier to share with someone else as well. Exactly, you know, even though we are a couple, we still sometimes want a bit of space. Especially, I'm now doing a lot of my work calls from up here, and it gives me that space for her to work down there, me to work up here. And then over the other side, we've got the sleeping loft. Yeah, let's go check it out. Again, it's super cozy up here, isn't it? Yeah, and here we still have, you know, two windows either side, and we've got green spaces out of each window. The other thing I really like about it is my bed is a normal bed. I've just taken the feet off and I've also sunk the mattress down into it a little bit. So again, you know, being able to just go to the store and buy a normal bed made things a lot more affordable. And then of course, in this tiny house, you have built to three meters. And one of the places where you really feel that you have that extra space is the loft, isn't it? And especially in this area we're in now, you know, you can actually get out of bed. You've got room to stand in the well here and actually get dressed, get changed. It makes things a lot easier. And then you've got all of your clothes storage up here as well? Yep, so this is my half over here. Nice little easy cupboards. And of course we've even got room to be able to hang all our clothes. So you moved in about a year ago. Is living in the tiny house living up to your expectations? Oh, it exceeds it by far. I absolutely love living here. Us living together in the tiny house, it's brought us so much closer together. One, you know, you can't run away from each other, but <laughs> It is, you know, we're constantly seeing each other, we're able to communicate with each other, and I don't know, I, I think if we had a really big house, we'd almost just lose that connection with each other. Yeah, and if we really need to have some time, or you know, we have to get some work done or something, we have different areas we can go to. So yeah, it's really working great. And now can you tell me a little bit about the cost that was involved in building this house? Yeah, I arrived back from Bali with absolutely nothing. So for all the furniture and appliances plus the build, it cost me around about $200,000. And obviously that speaks to the quality of the materials that you've used, the construction, and the additional size that you've built into this house as well. Exactly, and for me, it was, it was about being able to afford those decent quality materials rather than just trying to build as cheap as I possibly could. And comparing that to the cost of the average house around here. <laughs> if you were to buy a house anywhere around here, you're talking about 1.5 million. And what do you see the future holding for you now? Well, I really want to live in a, a little tiny house community with other tiny houses and people who have been able to get back a bit of their life, stop working the nine to five and start working on really epic projects. So that's my next big goal. So for me, I think one of the most important things that tiny house living has given me is this idea of decreasing your footprint to increase your impact. So talking about uh, the physical footprint, which means the size, it makes it more affordable, but also the impact we leave on the planet. Uh, so once I remove this, once I take it away from this parking space, in a year's time you'd never even know we were here. It's a much more sustainable way of living. It also means we're able to create the impact with each other. We've got more time for each other. We're able to have more quality time for each other. It means we've got the time to start impacting the rest of the world, the planet, the community. And for me, that's what it really comes down to. Decrease your footprint, increase your impact. Kyron, I think you've built such a beautiful home for yourself here. I think you've built so much of your own character into the space. I love how you built everything around the kitchen and really just focusing on the things that are important to you. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks, Bryce. This really is a very well-designed tiny house. You can tell that Kyron put a lot of thought into what he really needed in a home to make it work for him, and he built those elements into this house. Now joined by Natalia, there is no doubt in my mind that this will serve as a wonderful and functional home for the couple for a long time to come.